So I start running again. And this time I decide I've got to put my head where I want to go. So I put myself into that zone. You know the zone that they talk about? Have you had that experience? Where you're just really focused and everything just feels easy. So I'm in this zone and I'm just like, this is the next 10 k's along. And around this run there's hills, there's slopes, there's all sorts of things. But there's a really desolate patch where it's just bare bitumen and it's hot. So I'm in the zone and so I don't care. And then I get to the turning point and you can see the opera house, which is the finish point. You can see the sails. And I thought, ah, oh, yes, home, you know. And they're really cruel, these course setters. Three kilometres, you can see the finish line, but you have to actually run three <laughs> kilometres around to get it. And this is, you know, when your legs are at their worst, everything's aching. I've run out of all my food belt. I was absolutely, you know, hungry. I could have eaten a chicken or Mike's leg if he'd run past. <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that point that my shoulder cramped up, my left shoulder. And it just froze. And the finish line was so close, but I just had this huge cramp all of a sudden. So I'm like hobbling along. And of course the cameraman appears then, going smile. And I'm like, <laughs> and so I'm really stuck then. And I'm thinking, no, you know, come on, I'm just so close. I want to get to that finish line. And it was at that point that I had to dig deeper than I'd ever had to dig before. And that's when I knew. So we're just going to talk about what change is. So what is it? It's something you don't want to do. Something you don't want to do. Yes, we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but it, it's also global, isn't it? Would you agree that change is everywhere? Yeah. Yeah? It's constant. So you can't really escape change. You could get in, caught in the traffic. It's inevitable. Just like death and taxes. Yeah? <laughs> it can be stressful. So some something you don't want to do. So we're going to do some breathing right now. Just breathe and let go of any tension you have around change because when you leave here tonight, I expect for you to be feeling more confident and embracing of change, knowing that you're more clear about the direction you want to take with your business and what you want to do with your bookkeeping and really committed if you decide to go through with the accreditation to seeing that through. So just take some breaths for me now. That's it. A couple more. <laughs> Excellent. Because we can't control change, can we? What can we control? Our reactions. Yeah. You can control how you feel about change, your reaction to it, definitely. And your attitude. It's all about attitude, isn't it? So some of us like to deny it. So that's the uh, denial. Some try to resist it. Well, what happens the more you try to resist or deny something? More Yeah, it gets bigger, doesn't it? Not only does it get bigger, it persists. So it gets worse. It goes into an almost an overwhelmed state the more you try and deny and resist it. So we're going to cover tonight the five top secrets to making change work for you. So I want to cover off the first one because it's really uh, uh, the, one of the keys that I'd like. And please make notes if you, if you want to. But it's around choice. So you can choose how you feel. And that's what Barb said before. So right now your industry is going through a lot of changes. And how you choose to feel about it is completely your, under your control. And in, in Coaching Lingua we talk about cause and effect. So if you're in effect, you're actually blaming someone else. You're actually putting the responsibility on someone else and you're giving your power away. However, when you go into cause, you're actually taking responsibility for that. You're owning that as your problem and you're going to find a solution. So I'd like to share with you as we go through this a case study of one of my clients and she's happy for me to share the story. Her name's Alice and she owns her own financial planning business. And she's been running it for about six years, so she's been doing really well. However, she'd been undercharging her services, about 30% less than her colleagues. 
even though she probably had more professional experience than, her, than people around her. And she finally chose to do something about it because it was starting to impact on her cash flow, paying her bills, having money that she could live off for herself. So she took action around it and came and saw me about it because it really wasn't a, uh, uh, something she could live with anymore in her business. So that's what I'm talking about cause. She was at cause for that. She was taking responsibility and making a choice. The next part of it is the meaning that you give to it. So you can change the meaning. So before Sue said that change is something you don't want to do. What other meaning have you got for change right now? That might be a block. You don't mind it? So what, what, what does change the mean for you? Uh, maybe change your job. Yeah. It might not be your initial thing that you want to do, but you might be forced into something like that. Yep. And then you accept it and then do it. So in changing jobs, how do you see that as a positive thing? Yeah. Yeah. So you see change as, as positive, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Good, so that's what I mean by meaning. So what other meanings have you given to change? Anyone else um, got any definitions that they have around change? Costly. Costly. <laughs> Challenge. Challenge, yeah. yeah. Progress. Progress. Progress, so you see change as progress, yeah. So we've got some negative definitions of change and some positive definitions. Neither is right or wrong, it's just a definition, yeah. So any other, anyone else have any thoughts around change? Changes as good as a holiday, yeah. So you, you, you do, you're changing, you're going into a different area and it's probably adventure and stress and excitement and all sorts of things, but you probably don't know yeah. the end, end of it until you start. That's good. There is a lot of unknown in change, isn't there? There's a lot of uncertainty in change. And for some people who like certainty, the uncertainty part of it isn't a lot of fun. So it's being flexible enough to go, okay, I may be feeling a bit uncertain, but it can be an adventure. It can be exciting. It can be progress. It can be a new job. It can be all these positive things as well as the negatives. It's whichever you want it to make it mean. Neither is right, neither is wrong, but which is going to help you move forward. So when we looked with Alice around the meaning she had for her business going the way it was, she connected money with root of all evil, money with greed, money with being selfish. So can you see now why it was a real challenge for her to charge what she was worth, if that was the connection? So if you have change being connected with stress, then of course that's going to feel challenging to move forward. But if you had challenge connected with adventure, excitement, progress, opportunity, then which one's going to be more appealing for you to embrace? The second one? Yeah. So you can make up your own dictionary of meaning for how you want it to be. So we're going to get you to do an exercise now around pleasure versus pain. So that sounds a bit S and M, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get the whip out. No, <laughs> no whips. So pleasure and pain. Alice came to see me because she had too much pain in her business now. She was losing money because she wasn't charging it. So she wasn't collecting what she was worth. Now, human creatures, I don't know if you know this, we are more likely to move away from pain than we will towards pleasure. So you might want to write that down because you might see certain behaviours that you do is to move away from pain rather than to move towards pleasure. So that's something to think about because we're going to play with that in a minute. So I think there's enough for you to pair up into twos. I guess that's what a pair is. <laughs> and I want you to write on a piece of paper uh, what do you have to gain from doing the accreditation process on one column and what do you have to lose by doing the accreditation process. So we'll have about five minutes for you to do it in pairs and then we'll come back and we'll share what you've thought about. <laughs> 